your friend Ty Halleck back in the studio tonight. Do you remember that game? And that was a big catch on a big driver. Right? I do, and actually looking at some of those other ones, the, <laughs> my first touchdown ever was in yeah. Green Bay. Right. Uh, Chicago was a big, big win yeah. for us yeah. there. So yeah, it's. Uh, 23 years, that's, yeah, that, that, yeah. That, that's the beautiful part about yeah, it when you reflect a little yeah, bit. Yeah, and, and obviously it's, we, we don't want the summer to go by too fast, but we're just over a month away from training camp getting going already. Um, as a player at this point in the year, you're, you're through with OTAs. Is this your break time for, the, for those guys to recharge for training camp coming up? Yeah, I, I think so. I think these guys are really starting to get dialed in on what it is they need to do individually to show up and be right. And at the end of the day, you get through and you settle in with these rookies and everybody kind of gets and knows what's going on now. So... As you start to recharge, you also are doing those little tweaks and, and preparation things that individually that those guys will have done so that when they show up, it is rip, rare, and ready to go. It's football season, let's yep. face it. I mean, it's it's now, once you kind of get through that process, it's time to go. I remember going to your days, we could pretty much shoot whatever we want. Now it's pretty cloak and dagger. You can only shoot, as you know, limited times. But what the media has seen, they've had uh, Decker lining up at left tackle, moved Riley Reef over to the right side. Does that surprise you? Not, not really a surprise. I think really when you look at this particular uh, way this laid out and what Bob Quinn's doing foundationally here, he's kind of setting the table for the kind of players and, and personnel he wants. When you go through the draft and you look at how he drafted, he really did it very methodically and he did it very safe and secure, grabbing an offensive lineman. Then you got a, uh, a. Sean Robinson, a defensive lineman. They need help there. Uh, Killebrew is going to be a big addition to them in the, in the secondary. I mean, even grabbing a long snapper and Landis out of Baylor. I mean, everything he did was really set up, I think, in this draft to plug and fill holes that are definitely needed, but help self set the foundation for what I think ultimately is going to be his kind of stamp on this football team. Yeah. And it'll be interesting to see with this particular year where it goes with Caldwell, et cetera. Right. But Bob Quinn definitely has uh, a, a plan in place, yeah. I think. Seems very calculated. We haven't had that in a while. Uh, you and I were discussing earlier, to me, that's the way I thought Matt Miller would draft when he came in in 2000, build that way. Yeah, I, I agree. And it's, it's, it's a football background. I mean, it's not, he has not done anything flashy, but remember, he comes from the New England Patriots. They didn't do, right. They've never really done anything flashy. They, they get guys that they know are hard workers, guys that are going to come in and do the things that are asked of them. They're not looking for flashy. They're, not, they're, they're looking for guys that are football players and competitors. And I think that's really what he got. And I think that's why he was very happy to get Decker in that first spot and put him at the left tackle because of his very good run blocking ability. It'll be interesting, left tackle, he's gonna really be tested. Now he's good for him, he had Joey Bosa on his football team. Right. But I really look at this draft and what he's done. I'm very uh, happy with what Bob Quinn's done. Now it'll be interesting, how does Jim Caldwell, Matthew Stafford, and the people that have been there for some time, how are they gonna continue to assimilate into what he may be trying to get done? Uh, you, you play at that level, is it really, how difficult is it for a guy to move from left to right tackle? It, 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 there's nuances to it. I don't think it's something that's like super hard. Um, you're putting a different hand down. You got guys coming at you from a different way. But the reality of it is there's a comfort level there. There are some guys, ironically, that literally you put them on anywhere on the right-hand side of the line and they can get really flustered and, and don't like it. They get on the left-hand side and things are comfortable and vice versa. Right. Then there are guys that, quite frankly, can go either side. And Reef seems to be one of those guys. But I think having watched Reef for some time now, I think he's going he's gonna to do a lot better at right tackle is that left yeah. tackle becomes kind of the blind side, if you will, if, as most people know about, uh, for a right-handed quarterback, and it's very crucial. So it, it's going to be interesting to see what Decker does uh, here right out of the gates when he gets tested, especially in the preseason. Uh, we'll get a pretty good glimpse of what he'll do. Right, and that would be a huge fix, obviously, or to a big fix to a huge problem they've had. Uh, and I must point out to the younger folks who don't know, Ty came in, drafted as a linebacker, moved to the other side of the ball to play tight end. You notice I'm putting you in my age group now. Not with there the you kids, go, but, yes. But moved all the way to the other side of the ball. That, how difficult was that for you to do? Well, I, look, I think any time you, you, you're asked to do something different and have a totally different visual cue, uh, it, 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 it's, it's more of the learning process part of it and getting comfortable at a different stance, a different look, reacting to something as opposed to knowing, you know, offensively, you know what the play is and you know what your role and responsibility is. Defensively, you have to read and react to what it is the offense is trying to do and try to trust your training on understanding how people are lining up, where they're going. So it can be difficult, but my life, quite frankly, in football was fullback, linebacker, and tight end, and it's all within the box of football. A lot of run, a lot of play action pass, a lot of physicality to it. The reality of it is once you start to study that, for me, it became a, it became a fun thing because I really learned everything inside hmm. of that box of football where a lot of the action is. I really knew what they were doing. Not only my position, but I, I experienced 
expanded further and figured out what linemen were doing and figured out what yeah. the receivers are doing. So for me, it became a lot of a, a, a lot of fun, but it was a lot of work. Yeah, coach's mentality there. Uh, even changes within positions. Ashawn Robinson was kind of a gap holder in college. Now he's an attacker. We'll get Pice thoughts on the number two draft pick from the Lions right after this. Stay with us. You're watching Sports Overtime. Welcome back to Sports Overtime. Seven-year NFL vet Ty Halleck rejoining us again. Let's talk a little bit about Ashawn Robinson. He's a guy who was kind of left to fill gaps, or, and now he gets to attack more. They're really, sounds like they're really impressive with what they've seen of him through OTAs down there. Well, you know, look, he comes from a program in Alabama with Nick Saban that is 100% pro-style system. So for him, he's a large fella. He can do a lot of things. And I think the Detroit Lions love the fact they were able to grab him in the second round and leverage his talents. He's quick off the ball. He can be a hole plugger if needed. I mean, he certainly can, can take care of a gap no different than Holy Nada has done the last couple of years and where Ndama Kinsu uh, was before that. But it'll be interesting to see how he uh, feeds within this defense and gets a little bit more on edge and, and gets opportunities to get to the quarterback at, 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 as opposed to just being a run stuffer. So I think he's an intriguing pick. I think it's a very good pick. They definitely needed to have some more size and stability on the defensive line and, and to get him where they did. I felt that was probably one of the better picks in my opinion. Again, you, 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 you got to wait to see how it right. turns out. But I thought Bob Quinn did a really good job of that particular pick uh, with grabbing a, a really solidified player uh, at that position. Every year there's a draft pick favorite, Zach Zenner obviously last year. Uh, Miles Killebrew everybody's talking about, we see on YouTube, man that kid's a big time hitter, so why is he why is he sliding into the fourth round? I mean, what are your impressions of Killebrew? Well, you know, sometimes I think these guys, I mean, he had really good uh, draft numbers. He ran the 40 real well. He was strong. I think he threw up 20, uh, 225 pounds 22 times. So wow. really, really good athlete. But I think, you know, w when you're getting in the draft, the needs scenario, uh, you know, the Southern Utah, you, you start to wonder about, you know, size of play and all that kind of things. The, the reality of it is he's a really good player, and I think he, he he's very good in the box. He's a very good run stuffer. So I think he's somebody that's really going to transcend well uh, into this defense and certainly in the first couple of downs be somebody that can come in and get an extra guy in the box and stop the run, which I think is good. Hey, what are you going to be looking forward to most in the preseason as we get set for the, the annual home opener trip, which I think you and I have been to uh, just a one or two more, or, yeah, a decade or so now. You know, to me, I really think I'm going to be looking for how does Matthew Stafford look this particular season? There's so much on his shoulders. Jim Caldwell, and, and with having Jim Bob Cooter back the way they do, how is this offense going to operate without the vertical threat um, that, that they've had in the past in Kelvin Johnson? So the, the theoretic's going to play a, a big role in that. Ebron's going to play a big role in that. Defensively, we may not, may not be flashy, but defensive back-wise, I feel pretty solid. Linebacker play needs to elevate a little bit. Defensive line seems to be uh, solid still. But I think more than anything else, how is the Detroit Lions offense going to pick up the pieces when they are out of Calvin Johnson, who is one of the best receivers in the National Football League, and a big target? A lot of guys have to step up. It's not just going to be one guy. It's not going to be Marvin Jones uh, coming in from the Cincinnati Bengals. It's going to be a plethora of fellas that need to elevate their game and be there for Matthew. Stafford in this offense and if they can do that part of it I think they're going to be fine this particular football season it should be at least a winning season yeah hopefully so we are always hopeful whether you're a former player or just a fan we're all drinking the Kool-Aid this time that's of year. right thanks so much for coming in Ty we'll see you uh, around training camp time you bet